Hey, you all. Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, we're in Cavendish, Prince Edwards Island, Canada. And even more specifically than that, we're in front of Ripley's, believe it or not, auditorium here on Prince Edwards Island. Now, a few years ago, I made it my goal to visit every Ripley's, believe it or not, in the United States of America. And I accomplished that goal. But as I was searching for the different Ripley's to hit, there was one that was just, just a little bit out of reach. And that is this one right here, the Ripley's in Prince Edwards Island. So I, I visited all the Ripley's in the United States, but did not visit all the Ripley's, believe it or not, in Canada. I have visited the one in Niagara Falls, but this one here was just so a little bit out of reach. It's actually quite quite a distance from uh, you know, from the United States. Uh, but I, I finally decided to take take the leap. I think we are. Uh, it's about about four hours to the United States border from here into Maine, and then probably uh, another two or three hours to uh, Portland, Maine from there. So we, I drove quite a bit, quite a bit. I decided I was finally going to do it. I was finally gonna set apart the time to drive out here to Prince Edward's Island and visit this Ripley's, believe it or not. So I can officially say at this point, once I go through there, I will have visited every Ripley's, believe it or not, in the United States of America and Canada. So very excited to do that. In addition, down here, we're in a, a, little, uh, a little area full of attractions and restaurants and activities known as Mariner's Cove Boardwalk. And just down there, there's a wax museum too. So I have visited all the wax museums in the United States of America. I think with this, I think I will have visited, if I go down there, visit the wax museum after Ripley's, I will have visited every wax museum in the United States and Canada. There was one in Quebec that I was meaning to go to, that shut down. Unfortunately, as I was trying to visit all the wax museums, some of them actually shut down before I got to them. So I actually like defaulted where I had, I had one more wax museum to visit in the United States, then that just closed down and then I, by default, I had visited all the wax museums in the United States. But yes, today is a record setting moment here on the Carpetbagger channel as we head both into Ripley's and into the Wax Museum down that way. But I think we're going into Ripley's first, so please follow me. It's actually pretty exciting. Um, as I, I visited all the Ripley's in the United States, once I finally visited the last one in San Francisco, I actually got kind of sad because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to see any new Ripley's after that because I loved going and exploring a new Ripley's. But we have this, this Ripley's here, Prince Edward Island, that I have never, never been to. So I get to explore a brand new Ripley's, well, new to me, for the uh, first time. Some items here outside, some odd items, a bear made out of nails and a big tall orange transformer over here also think that okay we have a horse a horse made out of driftwood back over here i love these as well you've seen these at different ripley's these art statues made out of pieces of, uh, of junk you can look closely and see the different items here incorporated this is uh it's got a, a watch there on its face, a little bit of a uh, of uh, tinsel there. I see a uh, it's a Star Wars figure. Is that? I don't know if that's Han or Luke right there on his neck and in the Hoth the Hoth gear. All the different toys here. A little phone. Oh, it still turns a little bit. Phone there in the uh, in the chest area. Stepping through the doors here. Very excited to be be in a. Uh, in a new Ripley, he's got another another uh, transformer-like robot here. Look at his look at his teeth. Sculpture right here. This guy on a motorcycle. See all the wheels and gears turning. 
Not sure who this is down here. It looks like maybe a uh, some sort of coyote in a wheelchair. A lot of the Ripley's will have these fantasy coffins here where people can be buried inside of various objects. This is a crab coffin. You can actually be buried in a crab. They just insert your dead body in there and put the whole thing in the ground. This is a junk art Medusa there. Instead of snakes though, it has skis for hair. So the little objects, dice and locks hanging off the top of the skis. And uh, a piece of the actual Berlin Wall back, uh, back behind her. You know, whenever you enter a museum, you always ask yourself, do they have mummies? And yes, they have a mummified ibis right there. This bird here made out of silverware. You can see the knives there form the feathers. You got forks there next to the beak. So we head deeper into the auditorium. Oh, look at that, that beast, that beast back there. Different items of creepiness there. The baboon skull and up here, the Akoi human skin mask made of human flesh. This dress here made entirely out of spider webs. That's pretty terrifying, and if it wasn't terrifying enough, there actually is a tarantula right in the center. So I've actually heard this story before. It's Reginald Spears. He was a uh, javelin competitor in, uh, in the Olympics. He was uh, from Australia, competed, or tried to compete in England, but he actually failed the tryouts and had no way to get home. It says here a plane ticket would have cost him uh, Cost him $670, but so he shipped himself in a box, put himself in a box and mailed it, and uh, put it cash on delivery so he didn't have to put anything up front. And uh, he traveled 63 hours with no food. It says actually the, the shipping cost ended up being more than it would have cost him for a plane ticket. Over this corner we have Eric Sprague, the lizard man who turned himself into a lizard-like creature. Standing right here in front of a barbed wire exhibit, 215 types of barbed wire. Always fascinated by the different barbed wire exhibits you come across in different museums. All the different ways to twist, cut, and rip flesh. In this room here we have the world's largest great white shark that was caught with a rod and reel. There is the uh, fishing equipment right there, the pole and the hook used to catch the great white shark. That's pretty unbelievable. Imagine trying to get that hook out of the shark's mouth. Here is the shark's banquet here. All these items found inside the belly of one shark. Sharks eat a lot of garbage. Keep aware of mirages. You have this mirage effect, you don't see it a lot of Ripley's anymore. A lot of them have removed this effect, but you see the woman woman on the beach wearing only a towel but as you walk closer to her she has vanished the yield curiosity shop here as we look in the window and see a giant dolphin made of uh, toothpicks so there is a a light bulb for a lighthouse i don't know i actually thought they'd be bigger than that <laughs> and uh, some other nautical oddities as well it's a ship in a bottle, a chair in a bottle, and then to get very meta, there is a bottle with a little man putting a ship in a bottle inside the bottle. I, mean, I used to be fascinated with these when I was a kid. I had absolutely no idea how someone would put a ship inside a bottle. It really is like an art form and pretty amazing how they do it. So we enter here to the Wadlow room, and then we see Wadlow, all eight foot, 11 of them. I know the different Wadlows and different Ripley's often themed to, to match their areas and their outfit. I don't know if this must be the uh, Prince Edward's Island Wadlow here. I don't know, do people from Prince Edward Island dress that way? Here's the circus dress of a little lady. All right, look at this. We have the oddities 
room right here. This is super, super cool. Over here we have the two-headed, two-headed calf right there. Then you have a uh, a Siamese lamb born with only one head, but two bodies. That's a, a cow's boot there. It's for a cow that has hoof rot. I wear that to protect his hoof. And then uh, here, I think these are like some, some cow cow hairballs. In this case, we have a dog made of cigarette packs as well as some lint art. Here is a Cyclops chick born in Tennessee. A little baby chick with only one eye. I've never, I've never seen one of those before. That's pretty fascinating. This is an elephant foot calling card box. So apparently a calling card box is actually where someone would come to your home and you weren't there. They could leave their card there so you knew that they had stopped by and it's made out of an elephant's foot. It says this fox here was acquired by uh, Robert Ripley. It says it was in a uh, English pub in uh, 1931. You see there its barrel says, little fools drink too much, great fools drink none at all. See that <laughs> ridiculous fox there. I like, his, I like his little hat and his smile. So we look into this circus wagon here. We have the, the world's oldest beer. It says a uh, 5,000 year old bottle of Egyptian beer. That's pretty insane. And look, look at this. This is a taxidermy horse. It's, a, it's only the size of a dog. A tiny, tiny little horse. And then we have a uh, sideshow banner of Grimaldi the Clown. And that is the saddest, the saddest uh, ex explanation I've ever seen on a uh, circus banner. The world's funniest clown died of unhappiness. Now the, the story, I know the story behind Grimaldi is that he was very depressed. He was a depressed clown. He went to the doctor. When he went to the doctor, he was not wearing his clown makeup. He was, he was in his normal human clothes. He went to the doctor and said, Doctor, I'm so unhappy. Nothing, nothing can make me happy. And the doctor says, well, there's only one cure for unhappiness. You need to go see the world's funniest clown, Grimaldi. And then Grimaldi simply said, but I am Grimaldi. So he could make anyone happy except himself. And he died of unhappiness. Here's a nine-tailed fox. This is actually, actually a, a piece of art here. It's a, based on a mythical Japanese creature called the Kitsune, which is a nine-tailed fox. And over here we have Robert Earl Hughes, the man that weighed half a ton, the heaviest man ever drafted into the army. And then a very small man next to him, Mr. Uh, Tom Thumb General. Tom Thumb, and this is this has a little interesting fact that um, I, I didn't know about Tom Thumb. He was a you know a traveling performer. It was it was very small, but apparently he claims to have held the record for the most kisses, most kissed man who ever lived. Said he was uh, kissed over two million times by adoring female fans during his travels. That seems like a lot of kisses, according to this Ripley's comic. This teddy bear here has traveled 80,000 miles and been through a dozen countries. The hall of oddities here, all the different odd characters that Ripley's incorporates. And you can see mixed amongst here is this very long chain. Looks like these are like a pull can, like from like an old tuna can. They're all looped together in a big long chain. And who do we got here? We got the the crocodile man who uh, replaced his teeth with dentures made of crocodile teeth. One of the long necked women of Burma and the lighthouse man who had a hole in his skull that he kept a candle inside of him. Okay, this says that all these chains were created from beer can, beer, beer can tabs. It says there are 32,000 beer can tabs turned into this chain. And down here we have a disc wearer of Africa wearing the, the discs in their lip. 
is a double-eyed man. I don't know if you can look closely, but he has two pupils in each eye. And then the woman who wore a padlock in her nose. So we head into here. You know that every Ripley's is required to have at least one shrunken head. It's one constant you'll find amongst all the Ripley's. And there it is. Human's head shrunk to be extra tiny. Some disturbing jewelry here. This is a necklace made out of human finger bones. There's a flute made out of a human bone and a monkey skull, a monkey skull necklace there. Now we have a cemetery set up in here. And I do think this, this Ripley's has kind of an older design to it, which I really like, because this is some of the things you don't see in Ripley's anymore, so very cool to see the uh, the old cemetery set up. There's a, there's another one of the fantasy coffins. That one's shaped like a, like a giant shoe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, here we have some comical, some comical graves. It says, I came here without being insulted, and I leave without my consent, as does everyone. It says atheist buried there, all dressed up, and no place to go. Oh, you can see back there we have the, the hologram leprechaun. Here lies the body of Jonathan Blake, stepped on the gas instead of the brake. Here lies John Higgs, a famous man for killing pigs. For killing pigs was his delight both morning, <laughs> afternoon, and night. Who loves killing pigs that much? That's crazy. And then we have, uh, here lies John Yeast. Pardon me for not rising. So that's a, that's actually two, two, uh, there's a double-ended joke there because uh, not only is he not rising because he's dead, but also his name is Yeast, so he should be rising. Let's see this coffin here loaded with items, including a uh, vampire killing kit there. Everything you need for uh, killing the undead. Here lies the body of Dentist DeMille in the largest cavity he'll ever fill. The cavity being his grave, the hole in the ground that is a cavity. Oh, what's that? Have the, the bell ringing there from the, the crypt. Oh, this must mean someone's been buried alive. I don't know if we should peek down there. I'm afraid what we might see. Oh yeah. There's the, the guy that's been buried alive there. He looks very disappointed. <laughs> He's been buried alive. And this room here has some more interesting taxidermied foxes. That one's dressed like a samurai there. This one has got his little, uh, his little cap and tie. And there is a uh, fancy lady fox. Some interesting sculptures in here. This Abraham Lincoln is uh, is made out of hair. Also this dog here made from hair. And some human faces. These are hu human hair face masks. They're uh, human hair made to look like a human face. There's a horse vertebrae painted like John Wesley, the founder of the uh, Methodist Church. And I've actually seen another horse vertebrae painted like John Wesley. There's one in Lake Tutaluska at the John Wesley Museum. So apparently it was the thing to paint horse vertebrae like uh, like John Wesley. Matchstick sculptures there, the big race car and the train. Interesting things in here. It's a phone book with Marilyn Monroe's face carved out of it. Right next to some big, big clump of woolly mammoth hair. I like how random some of these exhibits can be. There you have a mummified mummy hand, a mummy's hand. This is a, and this is a uh, briefcase made out of recycled juice boxes. Painted bat here, and then the craziest chessboard you could ever hope to see there. It's, I guess it's a Mobius strip chessboard. I, I don't even know how you would begin to play this game of chess. I actually fell for it. I fell for the gag here when uh, 
have the wax figures doing the doing their photo op here and then I actually stopped to let them finish and then I realized okay not only are these wax people but I've seen this a thousand times and somehow I uh, I still fell for it so really enjoyed that Ripley's it is a smaller location it's kind of a uh, smaller rooms but they really pack in a lot of stuff in the smaller space and they do have some of the older the older uh, Ripley's exhibits that you don't always see anymore, so really cool. I'm glad I got a chance to finally come out here. All right, let's head down the boardwalk here and uh, check out the Wax Museum. Just a short walk from Ripley's. We have Wax World of the Stars. And look who we got here. I was gonna say it's Pappy, but it's someone called Utah Jack. We have Utah Jack in here. Let's give him a, I had to get a, uh, a loony to give him. So put the loony in there. Utah Jack sees lots of fun in your day. Listen up, listen good. There's a saying that rings true. The smallest deeds better than the grandest intention. Take it from Utah. Intending will get you nowhere fast, but doing something about it, now that's what'll reap you the big reward. Well, thank you, Utah Jack. Oh, we got, we got two fortunes. We have Shrek and Donkey there. Much like a lot of wax museums, we enter through the Hollywood section here. This is Mila Kunis. We got uh, Tom Cruise right there. Then Tom Cruise's ex-wife, Nicole Kidman. Now this is Jessica Alba. She's from her uh, a television show called Dark Angel. I, I, I don't know who this person is. I've never heard of her. Has anyone else heard of Jessica Alba? And we have Denzel Washington, Halle Berry. Oh, and then look, we got Paris, Paris Hilton over here with her, her chihuahua there in her purse. This is kindly, do not touch the wax figures. Oh, yeah, he looks like he's had a long life being touched by tourists. And look at that, they broke his fingers off. Yeah, definitely, that's why you don't, that's why you don't touch a wax figure. They, uh, they need their fingers. And then we have Jay-Z is prepared to enter the rest of the wax museum here. We have some historical figures in here, including King Richard, the lion-hearted there, and his crown and chain mail. We have some uh, some English royals here. And I, I'm not I'm not the best at knowing who all the uh, English royals are. This is Queen Alexandria Victoria. This is Anne Boleyn, and this is King Henry VIII. And I know, I know that uh, a lot of wax museums do have King Henry VIII. I think he is a, uh, I think he is a salty character. And this is a signed copy of Budgie Goes to Sea, written by, uh, written by the Duchess of York. Here's the Duchess of York. I guess this is a book she wrote and, and autographed. There's Pope John Paul. Some more of the of the English royalty over there. Is that uh, okay? I think that is uh, Princess Diana and Prince Charles. I think. And then uh, this is Queen Elizabeth II. I think that is the one. That's the one that recently passed away, and that is her uh, her husband there. And then uh, Marie Antoinette, but uh, she doesn't have a body. She just has a head. Oh yeah, isn't she the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She got her head chopped off with a guillotine. That's where her body went. And this is King John. Is he the one from uh, from Peter Pan? It says that these costumes here are from a movie, Johnny English. I've never seen, never seen uh, Johnny English before. In fact, I don't know that I've heard of Johnny English. All right, what is in here? We have Sully and Mike Wazowski from uh, Monsters Incorporated. Now this is an interesting display here. I don't entirely understand. Looks like maybe the inside of an old garage. There's like old objects here, old cameras, 
some old books, and then two men packed in crates. I'm a little confused. And this is uh, Lord Baden Powell. He was in the uh, British Calvary in India in the Boer War. And uh, David Laird, he is from Prince Edward Island and uh, was the founder of uh, one of Canada's oldest newspapers, the uh, the Patriot. And um, I, I don't know any of this stuff. I'm reading. I'm reading this off the cars. And across the way we have uh, Geppetto and Pinocchio. Geppetto in his puppet making shop, creating Pinocchio. We see uh, Figaro over there as well, and Cleo the goldfish. Down here we have some behind the scenes peeks. See how wax uh, figures are made. See the head of Alfred Hitchcock down there as well as some eyes and teeth and other spare items. It says this is the creepy side of wax. Open at your discretion. So we have this curtain, this curtain here. Let's peek behind the curtain. Oh my gosh. There is a bloated a bloated uh, corpse of some sort right there. And oh my gosh, look at that. Someone, a severed head with a eyeball hanging out. Oh, look how hairy that hand is. I think this must be the comedy section. We have uh, I Love Lucy and uh, the Three Stooges over here. Absolutely loved the Three Stooges when I was a kid. See Mo. Mo is their leader. Larry, the voice of reason, and Curly, who is the ultimate buffoon. The bicycle up there, and you can see E.T. collecting some uh, Reese's pieces there. It's a Star Trek exhibit here. Oh, what was that? Did you see? Uh, what happened there? Oh, there we go. There's Kirk and Spock beaming in and then beaming back out. Wonder, wonder if they're coming. Are they coming back? Oh, yeah, there they are. You can play with the uh, controls. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Play that button there. Makes, makes that go crazy. Also, I can touch it. Look at that. Some Star Trek props in here. This is Quark's bar set there. And up there is a face skrill. So like a thing that attached someone's face from the movie Earth Final Contact. Down here is a communicator pin worn by Captain Jean-Luc Picard. So that's pretty cool. And then even a swatch of uh, Captain Kirk's famous uh, tan shirt there. And we have uh, James Bond collection out here. Different uh, pieces of merchandise from uh, James Bond. Yeah, here's movie memorabilia and props. The suitcase there, I guess the gun and other spy tools. And down here we have a Lego version of the Titanic, in this case. The life jacket down there. Here is the artist Pablo Picasso. I remember my son James learned about him in school. And he came home and he said, day in school we learned all about Pablo Bagablo. In here we have Snow White and her seven dwarf friends. There's Dopey right there. Yep, there's about about uh, six to eight dwarves in here. But look at this, hanging in a tree above hand, admiring his creation. We have Mr. Walt Disney himself. We have the Wizard of Oz here, the Lion, the Tin Man, and the Scarecrow. I, this is interesting though, it looks like these um, wax figures here of the Lion, Tin Man, Scarecrow used to be uh, other figures, just have kind of a different look about them. Like the Tin Man there, you look really closely, he actually, he actually has, has hair there. I don't know, do you think, think the Scarecrow used to be someone else that's been painted to look like a Scarecrow? Leave a comment in the comment section who you think this Scarecrow was 
in the first place. How'd you like if someone came and picked something off of you? Over here, the Emerald City. Have the Wizard of Oz there. The giant talking head. But if we look behind the curtain, we see a man operating him. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. A Dorothy over here calling him out. Very interesting collection of characters in here. I guess we can use these lights to light up the display of Christopher Reeve there. Oh yeah, Christopher Reeve as Superman, flanked by Michael Jordan, the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger. We have Laura Croft from Tomb Raider, Harry Potter, that's I think uh, Jason Bourne back there, along with Rocky, and then Spider-Man hanging over top of everyone. You see a combination of, of props and uh, wax figures here. It says these jeans were uh, worn on stage and autographed by Matt Sorum of Guns and Roses. Oh yeah, you see the autograph there. And then it says this is a leather vest worn by uh, Willie Nelson. When he appeared in the movie, Austin Powers, the spy that shagged me. I have absolutely no memory of Willie Nelson being in Austin Powers, the spy who shagged me. <laughs> but uh, there is Willie Nelson right there next to uh, everybody's favorite, Miss Dolly Parton. We have Cher and uh, Christina Aguilera. I do believe they were in a movie together at one point. Then over here we have Elvis Presley hanging out with his good friend Madonna. They're both in their uh, performance gear. And then this is Satchmo, Louis Armstrong. So there's this dress here worn by uh, Liza Minnelli. And then this dress is worn by Barbara Mandrell. And then this was actually worn by Vanna White on the Wheel of Fortune. That's pretty cool. The Star Wars section here. You can see uh, Han Solo, Frozen in Carbonite. We've got Yoda. And then uh, Princess, Princess Leia there. There's a uh, the sand person lurking over her shoulder. See the Gone with the Wind section here. You can see uh, Clark Gable there chomping on a cigar and saying, frankly, Scarlet, I don't give a crap. Oh, you just noticed Alexander Graham Bell was slurking out this window at me. It's Mae West over there. We have uh, Marilyn Monroe about to have her dress blown up over her head and then leering back behind her is one Albert Einstein. Oh, I feel like I'm back in my home country here. The American section. You have uh, Martin Luther King Jr., Bill Clinton, and uh, Gerald Ford? And back behind them is the Canadian room. This is Brian Mulroney and Pierre Trudeau. It says this sword was used in the show Xena Warrior Princess. And then these arrows here were fired by uh, Mel Gibson in the movie Braveheart. We have this case full of heads here. Look at this. Oh, is that another another Alfred Hitchcock? They have two Alfred Hitchcock heads on display, but no full bodies. We got, uh, is that Ronald Reagan? Okay, Ronald Reagan there, and Jimmy Carter. And then this is uh, Prince Charming, I guess, from the fairy tales. Then Prince Charles. Winston Churchill, and Leonardo da Vinci. Oh my gosh, that's, at the end we have Robin from uh, from Batman and Robin there. Hey, hey, hey Robin. Oh my goodness. Check this out, this is actually a photo op. You could stick your head up here and be one of the, uh, one of the wax heads here. Some old Hollywood figures, Mr. Humphrey Bogart, Marlena Dietrich, and John Wayne. And then Liza Minnelli from Cabaret, where they're actually blasting the song on loop in this room. Into the Canada room, as we have Stompin' Tom Connors 
a uh, country musician from here in uh, Prince Edward Island. And then Miss uh, Celine Dion, she's Canadian as well, as is Pamela Anderson. They have an auction autographed uh, swimsuit from uh, Pamela Anderson from Baywatch. So here we have some Canadian history. This is Thomas Darcy McGee. He was an uh, Irish nationalist, a member of the Canadian Parliament. And uh, then this is Patrick James Wheeland. He actually murdered him, he assassinated him. He took that gun and shot him until he was dead. This is Anne Shirley. Says so she's from the book Anne of Green Gables, which I think that actually takes place uh, on Prince Edward Island. And then this is Lucy Maud Montgomery. So we can push that. Oh, it's making some storm noises. Here's Louis Real. He was the Canadian politician and founder of Manitoba. Then our final figure, Maurice Rocket Richard, a uh, Canadian hockey player. So thank you for joining me here today in Cavendish, Prince Edward's Island, Canada. As we visit both the Ripley's, believe it or not, and the Wax Museum, the world of wax. And now I officially have visited every Ripley's, believe it or not, in the United States and Canada. And I believe, I'm gonna have to double check it, but I believe I have visited every wax museum in the United States and Canada. May have to, may have to venture into Mexico. There is a, uh, I know there is a Ripley's, believe it or not, in, uh, in Mexico City. So I may have to, uh, May have to make a point of traveling down there since uh, since we're knocking out all these uh, all these Ripley's. But uh, thank you guys so much for coming along with me today. If you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country, film roadside attractions. I mean, travel around the country and this country as well, Canada, <laughs> filming roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. If uh, if you'd like to support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. $3 or more, which a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop, as well as doing cameo, someone's crying back there, as well as cameo messages, personalized greetings, birthdays, anniversaries, just for fun, whatever you'd like. If you're interested in that, check the description of this video. And of course, all those things go to help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Till next time, my friends. This one's in the bag. I don't know if anyone's watching this video still, but uh, we're here in front of a Canadian vodka factory, and uh, look at their mascot. It's a giant potato holding a bottle of potato vodka, a big drunk potato here. So uh, if, you're, if you just happen to still be watching, give a, uh, give a shout out to the, uh, the drunken potato in the comment section.